Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel and um, today I'm sharing with you my little swim run training and giving you a few tips about the Casco Bay swim run which I'm doing in August and also to tell you about my training plan that I have on um, Training Peaks and you can go to my website and uh, follow that link and then it's really easy um, to buy the training plan and then just download it um, right into Training Peaks and um, then you can just follow it day by day to get yourself prepared for the short course Casco Bay Swim Run. But so for today, here I am, um, I'm getting ready for my own little training. I'm going to do some uh, run and then swim and then run and swim. <clears throat> so a couple of times and I'm here at the lake um, practicing because the lake is a little colder and um, the ocean's going to be pretty chilly for race day, so I'm kind of trying to get myself acclimated to a little bit of a colder swim. <clears throat> and I have my nice um, uh, Orca swim run wetsuit on today, so I'm giving it a go. This is my second time wearing it, and uh, so far so good. Um, but today I'm trying the sleeve. So they have these really nice removable sleeves on the wetsuit, so it's a short sleeve. You can see here and then this part just detaches so I have the sleeves on today to try them out and see how it goes so what's really important um, that I want to get to you across to all of you that are going to do the swim run race or maybe even you're thinking about the swim run, run <laughs> race is really important to train in the gear that you're going to be wearing so I'm training in the lake and um, the race is happening in the ocean so it's a little bit different um, but I'm going to do the best I can to um, simulate everything that's going to happen on race day. Um, so I have an idea. I did the race last year, and I did the. There was one event last year, and it was the longer race, and so it was 10 miles of running and uh, four miles of swimming. And um, I wore everything that I was going to be that I had been training in, and uh, during the my training time. So, but on race day, I changed one little thing and I just put some arm sleeves on. So I had a sleeveless wetsuit and I put some arm sleeves on. And um, probably the combination of just the arm sleeves and um, being sleeveless in the ocean, I had some really bad chafing. And so number one lesson is really just don't do anything different on race day, right? It's an old motto and I thought this would be harmless. It's just arm sleeves, um, but it changed my... Um, my approach just enough to cause some discomfort and it was really uncomfortable so but I survived so um, I want to talk a little bit more about gear so as I said I have uh, my swim run wetsuit on but if this is your first time doing it or you're going to be doing um, a swim run you don't necessarily need to buy a swim run wetsuit so last year I wasn't sure if I wanted to make the investment in the wetsuit in case this wasn't something that I was going to kind of continue doing um, but as a result I just absolutely loved the training part to it and even if I never did a swim run race I really like the training part so I, I invested in a wetsuit. I do plan on doing some more events but there you have it. So last year I just took a sleeveless wetsuit, old sleeveless wetsuit that I had and I cut off the knees, just uh, cut off the legs just above the knees and um, it worked out fine. And um, so, so I wore that for training and that was great and um, it was a little stiff in the legs but you know I had nothing to compare it to anyhow so I got by, I survived and um, so again as I said this year I have the wetsuit. But um, also um, for sneakers um, you're just wearing your sneakers in the water so train with your sneakers on too. I did not invest in anything special for sneakers. I just took an old pair of sneakers that I had. Um, but I will say that it's really awesome to put some quick laces on there. So I have some stretchy. Okay, so here are the laces that I have on my shoes. This is because it's funny because even as swimming in my practicing, my shoelaces slowly started to untie, which was unusual. But um, I didn't want to have to stop and tie them or you know trip on them at some point. So um, get some quick laces because it just makes life easier. Put your sneakers on and then you're not taking them off. I did notice last year that some people actually stopped, took their sneakers off, put fins on, or didn't swim with their sneakers at all and put them in a bag and then swam with it. To me, that sounds like an awful lot of work and an awful lot of time eat, not just transitioning. And you might say, oh, it's okay, you're not going for time. But some of the events have swim cutoff time. So if you don't make it to a certain point, um, then you won't be able to continue the race. 
So I'm not sure if they're doing that with Casco Bay this year um, and having any particular cutoff, but do keep that in mind if you think, oh, I have all day. Um, you may not have all day. So um, play it smart and practice wearing sneakers and just kind of going from there. Um, I, uh, last year I did have a pull buoy and um, what I did was uh, I just held the pull buoy in one hand and then I had the flotation device. So this is uh, my handy dandy new aid swim buoy um, that um, I train with all the time. And then on race day you're going to have a swim buoy bag just like this with a little tracker in it. So one of you, one of you, uh, of your, you and your partner will be wearing it. And um, you could put stuff in it for the race but I don't think they really want you to. I think they just want the, the buoy bag and um, the tracker in there, the little GPS tracker. So, you know, you clasp the, the bag, you're wearing this around your waist. And it's to also help you make you more visible. It's really kind of nice for other swimmers to be able to see you so that you um, don't get uh, crashed into. Although the, the swim wetsuits are pretty bright and then we had a nice orange vest on um, provided by the race too. So with the buoy bag, um, I just simply didn't inflate it all the way so it had a little dent to it so I could kind of tuck it under my arm and just hold on to the handle so I had the buoy bag in one hand and then I had my pool buoy in the other. Don't think I'm going with um, a pool buoy this year. But there is a little contraption, you can get a little strap and strap the pool buoy onto your legs and kind of spin it into the center to wear it when you're um, running and then spin it out when you're so I spin it in when you're um, swimming and then spin it out when you're uh, running so you don't have to carry it. It is kind of nice to have your hands free when you're um, scrambling over the rocks and so on and so forth. So if you have pull, you're using paddles, um, you might want to kind of tuck those paddles away. Don't plan on carrying them because as you scramble over the rocks, you might want to have those hands available. And then um, the belt on this is great because um, we just, uh, my partner and I, we had, a, had the rope and carabiners and hooked it right to this belt. And then my partner was just wearing a standard, you know, running race belt snapped on and so she just hooked on to there. So we were connected um, using that. And so I was carrying the buoy bag and she was carrying the rope. So when we got to the water's edge, um, we hooked on because we were not connected when we were running. We got to the water's edge, clink, clink, we, you know, we're hooked up and into the water we go. So surprisingly, this is not something I anticipated or planned for, it just kind of worked out for us really well. Is that that rope, you know, tethered between, you have to kind of watch out um, to not uh, get too far apart or get around other people so the rope doesn't get caught on other people as you're going around them. And the same with, uh, there's lots of lobster buoys out there, so not getting hooked up on the lobster buoys with the rope. But it was really funny because we did collect a huge pile of seaweed that got caught on the rope and saw this drag going, so it was just the rope. So it was, um, it was kind of a funny moment. And then getting out of the water, we scrambled out of the water, um, uncooked, she kind of rolled the uh, rope up real quick, and then off we went, and I was just hanging on to the buoy bag and the pool buoy. So um, there was an, it was interesting also because the goggles from running getting kind of hot and they were getting kind of fogged up. So what I do to keep my goggles from fogging is I just have this little tiny bottle of baby shampoo and I rub a tiny, tiny bit into the goggles before they get wet, before I start swimming. I rub it in really, really dry and it keeps the goggles from fogging. And then if you get a little water in the goggles, um, you know, it gets into your eyes, it's baby shampoo, it's not supposed to really irritate the eyes too much. But again, make sure you try it on your own in practice and um, see what happens. And again, uh, also on race day, you're in salt water, so I've been training in fresh water, salt water, so to get salt water in your goggles, completely different scenario. But there was my tip for um, uh, helping me keep the goggles from, from fogging up. So. Um, I think that's everything. Oh, um, socks. People ask about wearing socks. So I wear socks for, for race day. 
And again, same socks. I've been training in the same socks. I'm going to wear the same socks on race day, not doing anything different there. So decide if you like socks or not. But I would suggest in my um, trials is I had those little head-like socks that you know don't come above the ankles. Well, sometimes some of them slip down and there was just really no way to get down there and kind of pull it up quickly. So I got, had socks that are a little higher on the ankle so if they start to slip down, um, I can always stop and pull them up. So, or just don't wear those socks, try and find another pair. But, um, so it's just a lot of these little things that are really kind of helpful. Um, also on race day, I wore an insulated cap. So um, it was, it's great for the swim, but you can get a little overheated on the run. And I think it's just up to you as you're running if you want to take that off and then when you get to the water's edge, take the time to put it back on. So for the short course, the longest run that you're going to do is three miles. So deciding whether or not, you know, during that three miles you want to take it off, depending on the weather. So if it's a cool day, you'd probably be okay keeping it on. If it's a warm day, you may want to be taking that off or, or making some sort of adjustment to keep your body from overheating. So um, anyhow, so that those are my tips. That's all I can think of for now. And, um, you know, a little bit on gearing, a little bit on race day. And, um, you know, get along really well with your partner. That's part of the, the idea of training is that you have fun with your partner, you support each other. It's a group thing, so you're also nice and, and kind and friendly to the other folks that are out there racing. So that this is really the, the um, heart of um, the uh, Otilla to have a friendly event. So not necessarily race competitive, you know, crush the other guy, um, but make it fun and um, you'll have a great experience by doing so. So um, you can uh, go to my website and get the information for the training plan that I've created for the uh, short course Casco Bay Swim Run. And it's on Training Peaks. And um, I also have a uh, book called Fresh Freestyle that I've co-authored with uh, two other total immersion coaches, Coach Suzanne and Dinah. And these are just swim practices with some great pictures inside for you to get give some get you. <laughs> it's a great book with some training, actual training. It's not like how to swim, but there are some photos in there to explain some of the drills and some of the skills aspect of the training so it doesn't just say you know do a drill there's also some information supporting how, how to do the drill and even why you're doing the drill so fresh freestyle and you can also go to freshfreestyle.com and learn a little bit more about some of our programs out there our camps and join us on Facebook so um, make sure that you sign up for my uh, YouTube channel go to my website learn more about me and my uh, training plans that are out there for you and um, I look forward to seeing you out there. Let's see what happens. All right. Ciao.